So far, we introduced the dot product between two vectors like u and v. We went over an example and we discussed the properties of dot product. Then we jumped ahead and talked about a theorem that is called the cauchy schwarz inequality, which basically says, hey, the absolute value of the dot product between u and v is less than or equals to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. The way that we define the magnitude is square root of, we take each component and raise it to the second power and add them together. Another name for magnitude is length or norm. And remember that we use direct proof in this grid math to prove this theorem. If you want to watch this, please take a look at the full video about this proof and the theorem. Now, how do we define the angle between two vectors? The angle theta between two non-zero vectors in n space can be found using cosine theta equals to the dot product between u and v divided by the multiplication of the magnitude Please note that we're going to restrict our theta between zero and pi inclusive. For example, if I ask you to find the angle between these two vectors, you're basically going to follow the formula. Cosine theta is u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. To find u dot v, you basically follow the definition of the dot product. The corresponding components are multiplied together, and then you're going to add them all, and then it is equal to negative 12. On the denominator, the magnitude or norm of vector u is square root of 24, which is 16 plus 0 plus 4 plus 4, and the magnitude of the second vector is the square root of 4 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1, which is square root of 6. From algebra, you can write it as negative 12 divided by square root of 144, which is negative 12 divided by 12, or negative 1. So cosine of theta is negative 1. What is theta? Theta is pi. What's the meaning of that? It means that u and v should have opposite directions. The relation between u and v is u equals to scalar multiplication negative 2 by v. Now, the definition of orthogonal vectors. Two vectors in n space are called orthogonal if their dot product is equal to zero. We can visualize it this way. The angle between them is pi over 2 90 degrees. Consider the following two vectors, u and v. These two are orthogonal vectors. And remember that these are basically the vectors representing x-axis and representing y-axis, standard vectors. The dot product between them is 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0, which is equal to 0. So based off definition, these two vectors are orthogonal. Now consider these two vectors. Are they orthogonal or not? So first we need to find a dot product between them. So first multiply three and one, then multiply two and negative one, and then multiply negative one and one. And finally, the multiplication of four and zero. If you add these together, it is equal to zero. So indeed they are orthogonal. Another typical question is, if you have a random vector, like vector u with components 4 and 2, determine all the vectors that are orthogonal to this vector. So what are we going to do? We're going to take a random or arbitrary vector with general components v1 and v2. For this vector to be orthogonal to u, it means that the dot product must be equal to 0. So 4 times v1 plus 2 times v2 must be equal to 0. Just multiply the corresponding components and add them together. Well, from algebra, 4v1 plus 2v2 is 0. What's the meaning of that? It means that 4 
V1 is equal to negative 2V2, or 2V2 can be written as negative 4V1. Divide everything by 2, V2 becomes negative 2V1. So you find a relation between the components of vector V. So if you take V1 to be T, V2 becomes negative 2T. So you can write down vector V using parameter T. Parameter is a real number. It is t comma negative 2t. But remember the scalar multiplication. Since t is a scalar, you can basically factor it out and write it in front of the rest of the components, 1 and negative 2. If you visualize vector u, 4 and 2, then any vector that is multiple of 1 and negative 2 is going to be orthogonal to this vector. Let's introduce the theorem of triangle inequality. This theorem says, hey, the magnitude or norm of the addition of two vectors is always less than or equals to the summation of their magnitudes. How do we prove this? Let us use the properties of the dot product. What do we know? We know that the magnitude of a vector to the second power is equal to the dot product of the vector by itself. So if I take the magnitude of u plus v and raise it to the second power, it is equal to the dot product between vector u plus v and itself. But remember that here you have a dot product. So you can basically distribute this over the second parenthesis and distribute v over the second parenthesis. You get u dot v plus u plus v plus v dot u plus v, which is basically u dot u plus u dot v, and then you have v dot u, which basically gives you 2 u dot v, and finally v dot v. Remember that from the properties of the dot product, u dot u can be written as the magnitude of u to the second power plus two times u dot v, and the magnitude of v to the second is v dot v. Now, it's always less than or equals to the absolute value, because absolute value is always positive. This guy can be zero, can be positive, can be negative. So putting in the absolute value makes this value quantity to be definitely positive or in the worst case scenario zero. That's why we put equality here as well. Now, by cauchy schwarz inequality, since the absolute value of the dot product between u and v is less than equals to magnitude of u and magnitude of v, you can write the magnitude of u plus v to the second power less than equals to the magnitude of u squared plus two times the absolute value of u dot v plus the magnitude of v to the second power. This guy is less than or equals to magnitude of u to the second plus two times magnitude of u times magnitude of v, which is coming from the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. This guy here and this guy here, the connection that you can see. And then this is equal to magnitude of u plus magnitude of v to the second power. So this expanded form can be written in compact form from algebra. Now, if you take the square root of both hand side, you get the magnitude of u plus v less than or equals to magnitude of u plus magnitude of v. So we took the square root of this quantity on the left, we take the square root of this quantity on the right, and then we get rid of the power two on the left. So that's how you end up with the magnitude of u plus v. And on the right-hand side, you get rid of exponent two, and you have magnitude of u plus magnitude of v. And that's how you prove the triangle inequality. We can use the triangle inequality and 
introduce a new theorem, Pythagorean theorem. This theorem says if u and v are vectors in the n space, then u and v are orthogonal if and only if the magnitude of u plus v to the second is equal to magnitude of u to the second plus magnitude of v to the second. Well, the proof should be very easy. From the proof of triangle inequality, you know that the magnitude of u plus v to the second is magnitude of u to the second plus two times u dot v. But this guy disappear. Why is that? Because these two are orthogonal. It means that this is equal to zero. So the magnitude of u plus v to the second is nothing but the summation of their magnitude to the second power. In the next stop, we're going to define the inner product. Suppose u and v and w be vectors in vector space p and c be any scalar, just a real number. An inner product on vector space v is a function. So if somebody asks you, hey, what is an inner product? You basically say, this is a function. This function takes a vector and it gives you a real number. That real number is denoted by, you can use this symbol, and then for these two vectors, u and v, you have a real number. So we're going to discuss this real number in different vector spaces. It follows some important axioms. First of all, the inner product between u and v is the same as the inner product between v and u. The inner product of u and v plus w is the same as summation of the inner product of u and v plus the inner product of u and w. C scalar c multiplied by this function or the inner product between u and v can be written as the inner product of c u and v. And finally, the inner product of v and v is more than or equal to zero. And it is zero if and only if you have zero vector. Show that the dot product in the space satisfies the four axioms of inner product. So basically, you want to show that, hey, the dot product in n space is a function that satisfies four axioms for inner product. Let's take a look. We know that the dot product of two vectors is basically multiplying the corresponding components and adding them together. Or to write it in nicer form, shorthand form, it is the summation of u, i, v, i. I starts from 1 and goes to n. If the dot product between u and u is equal to 0, it means that the summation of u, i squared is equal to 0. But what's the meaning of that? It means that since each u, i squared is non-negative, the only way the summation is equal to 0 each one of these components for u must be equal to zero, or basically u is the zero vector. Now, for the property that the inner product of u plus v and w is equal to the inner product of u and w plus the inner product and v and w, since the inner product of u plus v and w can be written as the summation of u i plus vi multiplied by wi. Remember that, guys, we are working with the dot product. And the summation starts at 1 and goes to n. It basically can be written as the summation of ui times wi plus vi times wi. And this guy can be written as the summation of ui wi plus the summation of vi wi, which is basically the definition of the dot product between u and w, and the dot product between v and w. So we just proved this property as well. Now, the inner product between cu and v, we need to show that it is equal to c times the inner product between u and v. 
it should be easy for you to see that the dot product between CU and V can be written as CUI times VI. And we are taking the summation over I. And since C is just a scalar, you can write it in front of the summation. And it's summation of UI times VI. Well, it's equal to C, the dot product between U and V, or C, inner product between U and V. And finally, it should be very easy for you to verify that the dot product between U, V is the same as the dot product between V and U. Well, the dot product between U and V is the summation of UI, VI, which is the summation of VI times UI, which is the dot product or inner product between V and U. So you just showed that the dot product that you work in calculus is a function and we officially call it an inner product.